So good afternoon, Paul Endicott. Now um, I'm going to introduce you to everybody as uh, the it's the Music Heritage London Tours, and I think you're going to explain that to us a little bit more because um, I've actually known you for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, and came across you when I was looking for a communications and marketing agency quite a long time ago in a previous life. And that agent, ad agency was called Endicott's. Endicott, was it End Endicott Advertising? Yes. Endicott's or Endicott Advertising. Yeah. So, of which you were the commercial director, uh, sorry, the creative director, let's get it right. Um, and, um, and since then, your career has changed, although I know you still get involved with those sorts of work. Um, and it's fascinating now what you've done. And the reason I wanted to talk to you is because your business has changed massively since we've been one on lockdown and, um, and two because of the, the sort of the genre and the industry that you're in, which is fascinating. So I thought it would be really great to get you on here because I know you've been doing quite a lot of radio shows as well lately to talk to you about your career and maybe what your teacher said at the start uh, <laughs> earlier opposites or not and uh, just to tell us a little bit about your career where you've been and what you're doing now and i know that you've got some really exciting things coming up in the future so i will butt in but you carry on and tell us all a little bit about your uh, your background and um, ladies and gentlemen paul endicott you take it away well thank you beverly thank you very much gosh how far do you want me to go back to uh, <laughs> school school i went to boarding school you did. Boarding school taught me a few things. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the I didn't go to university. I went straight into business. Yeah. Uh, my first job was in the marketing department of Thomas Potterton International, Ooh, where I learned a lot of roots. <laughs> what did they do? Boilers. We were talking about boilers earlier. Boilers. I should know how to fix boilers now, and I did. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and that was wonderful. Um, straight out of school pretty much so um i learned the rudiments it wasn't just work it was how to interact with your peers at work it, the stuff that they don't teach you at school yeah so i became a man quite quickly all my peers from school had gone to university and i'd i'd bump into them three years four years five years later they've done their three years they've got their diploma or they've got their their um desmond but they're out of a job. Um, mm. They weren't working. So I, by that time, had three, four, five years practical working experience to, yeah. to, to, you know, to then catapult me into um, starting my own business. I worked for a couple of sweatshops and agencies in, in London, mm -hmm. quite a few, actually. I, my, my, my premise was that if I stopped learning anything new, I'd move on. Yes. Um, so um, I'd be working in some sweatshops. We called them sweatshops. They were kind of studios who worked overnight, getting artwork ready for the newspapers first yes. thing in the morning or the next yeah. day. Mm -hmm. So commonly known as sweatshops. When when advertising and design was the old traditional method, you know, yes. typography yes. is a dying art. Nobody knows about typography now <laughs> because computers do it for you. Yeah. Um, so the old you know, blocks where you'd send a four color ad off with four blocks that would weigh a ton. You'd have to yes. send them out to magazines all around the world. Yes. So um, I've worked in advertising agencies through, you know, NCK, Norman Craig Cummel, which is, if you remember the film, Kramer versus Kramer, they were yes, both yeah. working for yeah. NCK. So I worked yes. with the same agency. But then when I was 29 years old, I thought, you know what? I could do things so much better. Um, as you do, you're in the 20s still. You think you can do things darn sight better than anyone yeah. else. So I, I, I launched uh, Endicott Advertising uh, mm. in 1985. Um, and uh, in this little studio that I created above a clothes shop in Richmond. Um, within a year, um, we'd moved. In, um, Hampton yes and um, we went from nothing to 1.4 million pounds in you know 12 14 months we were yes. starting to win accounts from larger mm. agencies by this time the digital age had started entering into advertising 
Yeah. And studio, we were one of the first studios to have Apple Macs dig digital um, studio. In fact, I was getting phone calls from ex-employees of mine, uh, employers of mine saying, um, oh, we hear that you've got a, a Apple Mac agency, you know, a digital mm. agency. Could you, mm. if we buy you lunch, could you tell us how you do it? You know, so <laughs> yeah, I thought, yeah. buy me lunch. <laughs> Lost you there. And, and you want to buy me lunch? Anyway, yeah. we started winning some really good accounts over and above traditional and established West End agencies. Mm. So um, that was great. And through the 80s, we just motored. We just grew and grew and we were getting some good brands. Um, but um, then the, the crash happened and, you know, interest rent, rates went up to 14% overnight and all the business owners in Hampton Hill mm. were in the pub at lunchtime getting yeah. absolutely sloshed. I think I lived um, in London then, actually, in Major Vale at that time, I think. And yeah, yeah. I think my mortgage went through the roof overnight, yeah. Well, you remember the days of Pickwick's, wasn't it? Pickwick's yeah. Wine <laughs> Pickwick's Bar, which wine we both bar, remember. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, cut a long story short, you know, we came down out the other end. Um, I had a couple of problems. You know, one of our biggest clients was um, Swatch Group. Mm -hmm. um, and we had within the swatch group itself we were doing work for probably six of the brands within swatch group yes and overnight um they basically decided a corporate dictate decided that they were going to take all of their marketing in-house so yes. not only did we lose the the swatch brand mm. but we lost all the other brands within the swatch group which included yes. omega um, rado yeah. So and, um, and so we lost probably 70% of our business overnight. So then mm -hmm. I thought, quick about turn, opened up a um, uh, the, the, the agency with smaller businesses rented rooms from me. I kept the studio going, so it mm. was a facility house. A bit like um, now with our, um, you know, sort of co-working spaces. Absolutely. There you, go. Well, you were absolutely ahead of the curve. <laughs> Way ahead of the curve. <laughs> And that worked really well. And we had some very <laughs> colourful characters and people in there. Um, um, the likes of, um, what's the two-ton Ted from Teddington, our local guy, what's his name? Um, Benny Hill. Oh, Ed, Benny Hill. Benny yeah. Hill's um, producer and director, Dennis Kirkland, rented yeah. space from us. So you can imagine mm. how colourful it was. Mm, mm. And, you know, with Benny Hill coming in, when Benny unfortunately passed away, we had the likes of... Um, Oh God, um, what's his name? The the actor uh, Oliver Reed used to yes, come yeah. in. We you remember Oliver Reed in yeah, Hampton Hill? Yeah, yeah. I remember all this in. really well. It was when I was actually I was actually working with the Chrysalis Group at the time. I think. Yeah. And, uh, um, and we were setting up a company called Chrysalis Interactive, which was sort of point of sale, point of information, that type of thing with interactive training, which of course is now my background. Um, and uh, yeah, so it was all about that at the same time. I remember all that quite well. Yeah, 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 definitely really colorful so anyway and as it went on advertising changed so mm. much dramatically um you know we didn't have the 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 two or three trade magazines or the you know consumer press it it would it just it was so well the tools in the toolbox just grew and grew and grew mm. and to try and keep up with the technology i was finding a little bit difficult as i was getting older so I then set up on, on my own when I got married, had kids, set up my studio in mm -hmm. at home. So mm. I had a home home office, carried on doing the advertising. Um, but at the age of 59 and three quarters, I decided <laughs> that advertising was not the right thing for me. I was getting too old. Mm. It, ageism was getting in, mm. you know, talking to 20 and 30 year olds when you're in your late 50s, just you was the credibility factor had gone yes. even though yes. the same rules of thumb applied yeah um but um so i i decided that i wanted to get into something that would offer me residual income yes um i'd lived in richmond for 40 years i was a semi pro musician and i had a marketing mm. and creative background so i know um, no, from about 18 that you played a guitar so oh God, I played the guitar at boarding school. I used to yeah. tell me one saying, you know, one day I'll be on top of the pops. <laughs> Never was. <laughs> so Still this time. Is, 
But this is formed actually part of what you're doing now, isn't it? Which I'm mean, actually quite fascinating, and it's amazing what you've actually achieved in six years. So well done. Um, five, so years, tell, five. five is it? Oh, sorry, making you older than older than you are. Um, so tell us about that. Tell us about these heritage. Um, heritage okay. Stories. So as I mentioned, knowing living in Richmond for forty years, you get to know mm. pretty quickly the um, the immense music heritage and collateral that we have here. Yeah. Um, and um, five years ago, I visited Liverpool and to see what they were doing with the Magical Mystery Tour and the Cavern yeah. Club, etc., just to mm. get some, do a little recce. Mm. Um, I did the Magical Mystery Tour. It's about an hour and a half, two hours maybe. But the content where the bus would stop at a street sign that said Penny Lane and everyone, mm. tourists, would get out and take photographs of a street sign. I thought, well, yeah, I can imagine if you're a Chinese or Japanese or American, that Penny Lane means a lot to you. But it, when you visit, you know, um, West London has, is the cradle of British blues. Yeah. And the bands, the seminal bands that started there, mm. um, Eopie Island and the Crawdaddy Club and the Richmond Jazz and Blues Festival. The yes. Evening, is immense and nobody knows about it. So mm. it was a blank canvas as far as that was concerned. Mm. Um, Liverpool and the Magical Mystery Tour carry, well, the Magical Mystery Tour carried in 2018, 80,000 passengers. Mm. Um, and um, I just thought, you know, I'm going to start something. I started Music Heritage London with a view to packaging and promoting the vast music heritage we have in West London. Yes. Um, and, you know, we have probably the, the Beatles spent as much time down here at Twickenham Studios and uh, as, as they did in Liverpool. Because they went so, to Major Vale Studios as well, didn't they? They were they actually used to go there. And I think that um, uh, the, the famous road that they were crossing, what was that? Oh, that was no, that was that was EMI Abbey Road. That was Abbey, Abbey road. road. Yeah, but, that's uh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is in which is up in uh, West Nine, yeah. is it? Up that way, yeah, 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 yeah in London, yeah. So, so that was so. Nice. So all the Beatles fans, when they come to London, really, that's what they want to do. Mm. They just want to go across that zebra crossing and maybe go yeah. to Carnaby <laughs> Street. But there is so much more about the, the, London's music heritage than that. Mm. And so a lot of tourists that come to London go and spend a day up in Liverpool not mm. knowing about the music heritage we have in West, West London alone. Yes. And I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'm focusing on that. We, we do do tours inside central London, but there are lots of walking tours that, that accommodate mm. that, that sort of mm. thing. So I said about doing it. The first thing I did was uh, apply to Transport for London for an LSP. It's called a London Service Permit. Right, and that allowed me to have my own bus service in mm. Richmond, Twickenham, and Teddington, which I ran mm. every hour on a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for mm. seven hours a day. Mm. Was that a red bus? It was a 1960s Route Master bus. Yeah. Oh wow, wow, that's it, amazing! Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and um, but it wasn't a sustainable model. Um, yeah. People weren't really that interested. But I tried it. It didn't work, so I moved on. Within probably six months, I then started looking at getting into central London, um, collaborated with a hard rock cafe, and we started doing tours from the hard rock cafe, uh, two separate tours, one in central London, more of a swinging 60s experience, yeah. and the other was coming down to Richmond to introduce a lot of the inbound tourists to the vast music heritage we have down in, in Richmond. Yeah. But the USP, if you like, there are a few other people doing tours, music tours, 60s music tours, but none of them engaged with the music legends of the day. Yes. Um, and, for example, in the last two years, we've had the likes of Kenny Jones on the bus, Bruce Welsh and Brian Bennett from The Shadows. Mm. Um, Mick Avery's become a personal friend of mine, the drummer of The Kinks. Top Topham from The Yardbirds, the guy that Eric Clapton took, took the place of mm. uh, and it just goes on last uh, um, December I was having dinner with Patty Boyd so I'm starting to meet all of these wonderful legends yes from the 60s and mm. introduce and they're coming on the bus tours Steve Haggett from Genesis that started you know 
in, in got into music, mm. he was inspired by going down to Eel Pie Island and watching the bands, you know, Long John Border, et cetera, and the Stones that played down there. So yeah. I'm getting in, involved with them all and they're coming to the party because it's their legacy that mm. we're helping to perpetuate. Mm. The sustainability of this is not aiming at the baby boomers who have fond memories of that era, but yeah. it's in the next generation. So yeah. what interests me is the culture, mm. um, that uh, what the tipping points were. So that's giving the product a lot more depth um, group travel organizer magazine gave us the quote a couple of years ago saying uh, it's the most immersive and compelling music experience to rock the streets of London yeah because I mean you're on your website it's absolutely it it's amazing isn't it you know and um, that whole um, <coughs> excuse me that's um, you know what you're doing and I know that you've you've sort of changed things because of the um, uh, the sort of the lockdown uh, that we've had as well but um, and not but on your website you know people can actually go and read all about the you know the testimonials people have written uh, written about you which is amazing and you've done incredibly well you know in that short space of time mm -hmm. so I'm quite interested to see how you've um, sort of taken you know what you know on online which is just amazing. I mean, you know, when people think about bus tours or tours, they think about actually getting in a, you know, a, a wagon and going off. So yeah. you've, you've done something quite special recently, I think. Well, it's, it's starting to work now. We, we um, when lockdown happened, we realised very quickly that there weren't going to be any inbound tourism coming into mm. London. Mm. And the group tours, I mean, for example, in December last year, just, just in two weeks, we carried 126 Norwegian tourists that we looked mm. after for four out of their five day excursion in London. And they booked straight away after that for this October. Yeah. Now, that was cut off straight away. Suddenly we were, we were, <laughs> we were uh, excommunicated from our, from our, our, um, our market mm. and I had to think outside the box and I suddenly thought experience it's all about the experience yeah as as the old saying I wish I'd thought of it myself it's not what you tell them it's how you make them feel mm. and how I how can I recreate this um without any tourists coming to London I thought I've got to take London to the market yeah. and with the advent of uh, the popularity of Zoom and bearing in mind, a lot of grandparents have got to know Zoom very quickly because yeah. their kids have taught them how to use it to, so mm. that they can, they can um, have conversations with their grandchildren. Yeah. So our, target, our initial target audience, the baby boomers, who, who are the low-hanging fruit, um, are au fait with the technology. Um, and we can now go out to a global audience, mm. um, those that are um, in their ranches in California or the high-rise apartments in Buenos Aires, big fans yeah. of the Rolling Stones. <clears throat> um, and uh, we can do that virtually. And we started doing these virtual live virtual tours as opposed to a lot that's out there yes. that is pre-recorded. Mm. So we have warts and all. But we also invite the music legends along as well to be in that party. So mm. recently we've mm. had the Beatles hairdresser. We've had uh, Tony oh, Bramwell, who was the, um, the, 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 the road manager for the, for the Beatles. Mm. Um, many, many. Um, John Lennon's childhood sweetheart has been on our tours. You know, the mm. remembers John fondly. So we're getting... The, our USP again is the fact that we have it's live, so the screen shows the road <laughs> as we're trundling down. For example, we're cruising the King's Road. Yeah, now that's actually quite sexy if you're you're in America, in a in in Manhattan or wherever it is, and you fancy popping over to London live to do a a sixties um, tour uh, for an hour in the company of a sixties celebrity mm, absolutely. Uh, and learn learning about the music the music supplied that we play is uh, supplied by radio caroline again mm -hmm. authentic mm. we need we're trying to keep the product as authentic as possible yeah um so radio caroline supplied us with a soundtrack with all the original jingles from the 60s oh wow that's incredible 
Yeah. So it, it's and it's starting now. We've just launched or in the process of launching a Beatles in West London tour. So we now we have three tours last pretty much an hour. The Beatles one lasted an hour and a half because there's a little bit more traveling to do. Um, uh, it's the Swinging 60s experience. So we focus in central London at uh, King's Road, King's yeah. Road, Edith's Grove, Cheney Walk, uh, South Ken. Yeah. Um, and there's loads to see there. It's not just mm. music, it's fashion, mm. it's culture. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then we have the birth of the Rolling Stones, which is really um, around Richmond and Twickenham. So we end up yeah. at Eel Pie Island. Mm. Um, and we're just launching the Beatles one, as I say, in, mm. in, the, in the company of celebrities. So we've, mm. we've, we've got passengers in the last couple of weeks. We've had passengers from Cape Town, from California, New York. All uh, virtually, uh, which is amazing. Vancouver, yeah. Spain, all yeah. virtually. Yeah. That's fantastic. And so it's a lot cheaper. You're actually doing the drive, though, aren't you, at, that, at the same time? So it's all live? It's all live. I'm driving and hosting the event. The Beatles one will be co-hosted by a guy called Richard Porter, who will be mm -hmm. sitting at his home computer, showing you screens, uh, pictures, images, uh, videos, while I'm on the road. Um, and again, we'll be um, in the company of 60s celebs. Mm. Um, so... Uh, that's the way forward for us and it's now just a case of uh channels to market and making people mm. aware of it mm. the ones that have the trip advisor reviews that we've already got have been phenomenal in fact there's a, a group of guys from california who are just about to go on their third tour they've just booked their third tour this month or mm. you know and in uh, in the last four or five weeks Mm. because they enjoyed the first two so much so yeah they go they're, they're repeating one of them yeah um so um and their quote was you know i'd, I'd pay pay the the 12 pounds just to come down to london for an hour and be in your van yeah. seeing <laughs> the king's road let alone all the content that you yeah, you, that's uh, right. yeah, yeah. you promote so um, you, when are you actually going to be able to get back in your in your bus van or otherwise then when can you actually because it's all like really psychedelic yeah yeah the 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 route master buses we've now decided to keep for group travel because we can yeah. get up to 72 passengers so we're we're going to be opening that door once the the travel gates reopen yeah and people can come to london in groups mm, mm. um I don't know how long that will be, but um, we purchased uh, in January this year a nine-seater Mercedes Vito, which we've um, which we've uh, done a, a, a what's it called? Um, Bit of a paint job, I think. Paul. Uh, uh, well, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's a paint. It's um, oh, a wrap. We've yes. wrapped it in a psychedelic graphics. Yeah, it looks um, great akin to um austin powers you know it's it's like yeah. you can imagine yeah. austin powers jumping yeah. out um <clears throat> and that enables us to take groups of up to six people because it's a conference style veto so you're facing each other so we'll have a a screen between the driver and the back compartment yes uh it'll be sanitized <laughs> and we're now yeah. opening that up to families or bubbles yes. that want to experience the tour uh, in real life and mm. we can do private tours and bespoke tours um, mm. for as you know the bespoke tours for as long as they want really yeah we can, we can do a, a package to suit whatever they mm. want so in corporate terms you could have like a whole bunch of people coming out from a company couldn't you for a tour on a bus when you're allowed um, and then you've got the smaller groups which you can go into your um, into the psychedelic bus psychedelic, um, yeah. or people have now got the option to to go online so you've actually got absolutely you know, those, those sort of options that's incredible so um, are you going to be picking up on other um, genres Paul or are you going to stay with the 60s well the 60s is the the hot potato at the moment and I think Unfortunately, with the demise of many of our music legends who are starting mm -hmm. to um, to pass us by and go on to the um, to the uh, to the music venue in the sky, um, the '60s is a good one to focus on. 
yes right now it's my passion i grew up in the 60s so Mm. nothing better to start the ball rolling Mm. once we have the the template really established and and we've worked out all the nuances and get it got it absolutely right um then we'll be looking at opening up the the different genres different decades so we'll be going 70s 80s Mm. 40s even you know with the chanson and the blitz london some great swing music um and um you know taking people to where it happened Mm. in those days not to say we're, we're, we're not going to be hitting the people, especially in the 40s, that remembered it. So it's yeah. very much, uh, we've got to be very clever with our marketing on that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to think that we have, um, well, as an example, we, we did a 50th anniversary event at the Gore Hotel because we also put on live music as well. Yes. Um, at the Station Hotel and at the Troubadour. Mm. And... We put on a 50th anniversary event in 2018. Uh, it's where the uh, the Beggar's Banquet album release was at mm. the Gore Hotel in 1968. Mm. It's where the famous Rolling Stones food fight happened. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and um, uh, stay with me on this. I'm coming to the point. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> the... Um, we, we, we had a hundred, it was a sellout uh, event. Um, the Gore Hotel were brilliant for this event. They, uh, their marketing department really helped us out. Um, there were people flying in from Europe for it. Um, we, wow. There were six, 60 covers for dinner, 30 people stayed at the hotel. Mm. Um, I booked not the Rolling Stones, which is the, one of the best uh, Stones tribute bands I've tribute ever band, had. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Mick Jagger is a doppelganger for, for, for is Mick. He? Um, <laughs> but I also invited along Chris Welsh, who is the journalist for Melody Maker, who was at the party 50 years before. Oh, wow. And, um, and Michael Joseph was the photographer of the Beggar's Banquet album cover. Mm. I found him and I invited him along and they both yeah. said a few words to yeah. be assembled. How great is that? Um, <laughs> That's amazing. And it was a re- and obviously we had the bus tour as well, so mm. people could could have the option of having, you know, dinner, bus tour, and gig, dinner mm. and gig, gig on its own. Mm. So we had lots of different options. It was so successful. Yeah. But the overriding thing, and you'll <laughs> see on our website, there's a video that we've made of that evening. But the overriding um, uh, impression and result from that is that I found 50% of those that attended were young people. Yeah. So that is our sustainability of what we're doing. We wouldn't yeah. be able, we wouldn't be in existence in hopefully another five, 10 years time if we just aimed it at the baby boomers. We've yes, got to look course. at the millennials mm. and even younger. And yeah. I'm glad to say that there is a, a, a great sort of friendship groups and other um, uh, you know, uh, gr- groups of people around London, if not the whole country, and hopefully worldwide, yeah. that are starting to engage with the philosophy, if you like, of the counterculture, because mm. they're going to need it a lot more. Yes. In the, what in in what the legacy that we've left the kids, they're going to have to mm. almost be engage uh, uh, inspired by the way we grew out of the austerity post-war austerity not that i remember yes. the the war yeah, but yeah. our our kin <laughs> yeah, you know, sure. our parents grew, <laughs> and that was the, what what mm. um what got them out of the war and it's going to be tough for our kids in the future and i think they can learn a lot by the the mo the modus operandi of how yes. people lived mm. and and <clears throat> got on with it in in mm. the post-war culture Mm. Um, and uh, and be inspired by you know mm. so the young I, the youngsters. I mean, I think it's great, isn't it? Because you've got like your music background, you've got your your comms background, your agency background, and and now your music background again. So you yeah. know they say that <laughs> if you do something you love, you never work a day in your life. And it seems to me, Paul, that you're actually now uh, just living your dream, really, which is music and you know, that whole, uh, that whole way of being and taking people on tours, because you're a very affable person to sit and chat to. 
and uh, you know and uh, is, you can put a check in the post <laughs> and um, the you know just the whole way that you're actually coordinated that now and taking it online you know to meet the the needs of our of our current situation so this whole um passion and thing that you've been doing for years has all now come around into your job and uh, so back from the boarding school days when uh, you were what what were you like at school were you <laughs> little mouse I wouldn't say boo to a goose. I was beaten yeah. up uh, and I'm going to get them back. I tell you, I'm going to get the Peaky Blinders after them. Yeah, but, Peaky Blinders, uh, that would do us. Anyway, so um, I think with regards to, um, you know, you've got this, you've got this uh, established client base, haven't you? Which is, as you say, the baby, baby boomers and then the, all the other, you know, so I know my daughter is 21, you know, and she loves listening to quite a lot of old music and she's on a playlist. I go, where have you got that from? You know, and then, uh, but she's really interested in it. So I do think there's like a whole market out there that's still untapped music wise, isn't there really with it? Um, and uh, bringing on board, um, you know, some new, some new um, generations, absolutely. So where's it going to go for uh, Music Heritage London in the future then? What, what have you got planned for us over the next uh, over the next six months or so? More online? Well, yeah, it's it's um, the, the, the live tours, the live um, uh, private and bespoke tours in the minibus. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And online is, I think, a massive untapped market. I've just dabbled around with some Facebook ads mm -hmm. recently. Um, just two or three days I've been running ads aiming different countries to gauge the feedback, really. Mm -hmm. um, and I posted some just to Buenos Aires the other day, just to target that area. Yeah. And we've had a reach of something like 60,000. And um, you know, massive. the response, the engagement, yeah. not many bookings at the moment. So... Mm -hmm. What we're doing to counteract that is we've, we're starting to work with a translation company up in Halifax in West Yorkshire. Yes. Um, oh, why did I put that accent on? Uh, <laughs> I apologise for any northerners out there. Um, That's really good. So what we're going to do is translate, well, we're, not translate, we're going to have interpreters on the tour when we oh, wow. target countries yeah. like latin spain so we won't mm. just do spanish we'll be doing mm. latin spanish mm. and we'll have interpreters which means that they'll still hear my voice at 20 percent of the volume but they'll yeah. hear, hear the interpreter 80 percent of the volume mm. and the ads that we produce facebook ads and the content on our booking page will all be in spanish so i'm hoping that that would be that is the barrier to them converting from the interest that they've already shown as say mm. the likes and the shares have been phenomenal yeah but the conversion has been poor and i put the barrier to conversion to be the language yeah so you know we 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 try we continue to test um these tours and adapt them and because at the end of the day it's that's what that's what it's all about you, you never stop testing yeah that's never right. stop testing and you've got such an amazing now array of social media channels to hit different industries and different environments, different countries. And I mean, Target, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's Targeting. Massive, isn't it at the moment? I think it's just, uh, it's just awareness really, isn't it, of, of London Heritage. What's your website address? www. It's 60sbus.london, simple as that, 60sbus.london. 60sbus.london, right, okay, so we'll put that on the uh, the little uh, intro that goes with your, your video today. So is there anything else you'd like to tell us, Paul, that uh, people might be interested to know about your tours? No, but um, sometimes it's, it's hard to get your head around what it's going to be like. Or mm. What I'd recommend people do if they've got any doubts as to what it's all about, even after seeing the, the websites, I've yeah. produced everything myself to keep the costs down with my creative hat on. <laughs> um, but just look at the TripAdvisor reviews and they can be found on the contact page mm. of my website. Have a read yes. of those. Mm. And that speaks volumes uh, mm. and, uh, much louder than I can um, mm. or you know, it holds peer group advocacy is yeah, a sure. site more, more uh, important to the potential customer than, mm. than the owner going, giving it some yeah, about how, yeah, yeah. 
oh, lost you there. So, uh, so there we go. And I hope to see you on there one day. Yes, I'll be up. I'll be coming up as soon as I can. I did say that, and uh, that'll be really fun to sort of catch up anyway. Um, and uh, but uh, so, music legend Paul Endicott. Thank you very much for coming to talk to us today. And I'm going to put all the details on about your tours on onto the uh, posts that we're actually going to use for this uh, this webinar, if you like. And uh, because okay. I think what you've got is just amazing. And there's a few people I can think of also that are in the States that we could link you up to. Um, and I'm going to do that this afternoon. So Brilliant. thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, want to catch up with you and listen all about what you've been doing but also, also because I've known you for such a long time and it's always delightful to catch up and see what you're all about. Thank you Beverly. That's no problem at all. Speak to you soon. Take care.